All right. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Terra Prime in our Kung Fu Corner. Um, I am here with actually one of my uh, students from class, uh, from real life class, uh, Brent Emery. How are you doing, Brent? I'm doing well. How's everybody out there doing? Hopefully we're doing, we're, we're getting by. So Good, good. All right. So uh, today we will, um, we're just going to go over a little bit of um, one thing that we don't go over a lot, which is power um, and uh, expressing power. Um, we go into a lot of movement and I, I talk about movement a whole lot, but uh, today uh, we'll talk about that. And what that's gonna have to do with is your core, right? So um, the stuff that we'll go over here is, uh, is, is really part and parcel of that. And uh, core training is one of those things that is going to be uh, associated with this and will give you the most, this is the area where it will give you the most benefits, right? Um, even if you don't specifically train this type of thing, these, these benefits tend to overflow into other areas. Um, but I will show you how to adapt these to real life so that you can um, do it that way. Um, and then we'll probably end here a little bit early because we know I know we've got Damon coming up on the channel. Uh, Damon Honeycutt, General Sun is doing a oh, cool. show. Uh, yeah, I think I got an invite to that. Yeah, Facebook Live. <clears throat> yep, okay. We've got Zoom here. We're, these classes, again, are going to Zoom, so um, people can join in if mm -hmm. they want to. Uh, Saturday's class is up. Cool. But anyway, um, we're also doing Facebook Live classes all, all month. So Damon is up tonight, um, and uh, Cedric um, early in the morning for us here in North America, but uh, about 10 a.m. For, for Parisians and, and other people in France and okay. Europe. So, all right, so let's go into what we got here. So the, the first thing what we're gonna kind of go over is, and I hope, I can't, I don't have any, uh, <laughs> I hope everybody can still hear me. I don't have my, uh, I'm not working on OBS here, so I don't have my, my levels here. So. I hear you. Very good, okay. So the first thing that we'll start with is stance training, okay? So Zhan Zhuang, stance holding. We've talked about this before. We've gone through some of this um, in the past, but here we'll kind of go into it a little bit more depth. We're going to, we'll just hold a stance here for a couple of minutes just to get the feeling, just so that we have our, our, our bearings here. And I'll kind of explain to you what we're doing. So get into a mabu, nice and comfortable, right? Okay. Um, you don't have to go too low, too high, just here. Find where you're comfortable and then go just below there, okay? So we're here, we're gonna get erect here in through the spine. So go up to your back. So it's like you're standing up against the door and making yourself taller. Shoulders kind of go back and then down into the back pockets, right? And then we're going to breathe from the lower abdomen. You can put your finger or your thumb in your navel, let your hand fall down onto your stomach, bring your other hand over that. And then when you breathe, push your hands out when you breathe, or when you breathe in, push them out. When you breathe out, bring them in. So Pulling the breath down here with the lower abdomen and then pushing it back up. Okay. Stay in your stance. Don't rise up or fall down. If you're going to move, just kind of sink down here a little bit. If you move up and then go back down, you're just going to tire yourself out a little bit more. Just kind of stay there. Let it, let it go. Now, if you're new to this, your, your legs will start shaking at some point. For some of you, that might be almost immediately. Um, if they are shaking, don't fight that feeling. 
let them shake, kind of relax into it, let them shake. At, so, at a certain point, they will just stop shaking. And at that point, you'll see that you could almost stand there indefinitely. So that's almost the point that we're kind of looking for. All right, now, we're not gonna to worry too much about our hands right now, okay? Just concentrate on that breath. We can go in through the nose. We can go out to the mouth or the nose. Don't go in through the mouth. So. Or. Okay. We don't have to worry about making it too quiet right now because we're trying to be trying, we're, we're really, what we're really trying to do is get this whole apparatus moving and functioning. Now, as you're standing there, just kind of let your weight sink into your legs, <clears throat> okay? Um, again, if they're shaking, let them shake. Don't try to fight that. You want something to do with your arms, you can put them here to be easiest. Here is where most people begin. And here is parts. Now, these different types of postures are going to do different things. As I'm holding it here, these muscles are working to hold this up, okay? Now, the trick to this and the real benefit of standing is something we kind of call local and versus global muscle function, okay? So global muscle function is moving, right? A contraction of the muscles that moves the angle of the joint, change changes the angle of the joint, okay? But local is something that holds that position, okay? Now that's a low level, but a very long lasting, whereas the movement one is a a high level, but very short last. Okay, good. Now, the breath is important because we're gonna to try to match our breath to our movement when we go here. And we're only gonna be talking about just a straight off punch, right? Just putting it in there. That gives us the most biomechanical stuff to work on in the same kind of thing. Okay. Uh, over here for few more seconds, All right? Now, as you see, you want to be buoyant, but you don't want to bounce, right? You want to just hold yourself there. And a kind of, another, another term for it is a tonic contraption. You're just holding this position, right? And your, 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 your muscles have to figure out what is the most, what is the right amount of tension to place in each of these muscles to accomplish what we're doing. So if you're holding it like this, you'll feel a burn right there, pretty, pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty instantly. Um, here, if you're holding it like there, here you're probably not going to feel a whole lot much because everything's kind of going with gravity. Okay, so let's stand up out of here. We're gonna do it real slow. Just shift over to one side, bring this foot in, and then straighten your knees. So don't just kind of pop up. We want to try to ease our body out of that. Um, okay, so here are the the uh, kind of important bits um, like this. Oh, we got another another person joining us here, and we'll let him. Uh, there we go. Okay, <clears throat> so as I was saying, this doing, holding, holding a stance is the first step in kind of power training. Um, it allows us to breathe. We try to really get this abdominal breathing going. We're gonna alter it just a little bit um, in, a, in, in a minute, but we're also trying to get that, that feeling so that our, our body is used to holding these positions, right? So that when we get into them, the, we don't tire so quickly, right? It's familiar. The body knows what to contract, when, how long, all of that kind of thing, right? So that's, 
that's that's really kind of where we're going. Um, now with the breath, this is where we're going to start interacting with our core. Okay, so our core is our abdominal muscles around the trunk, the back, or like over the kidneys here, right? Uh, I consider the glutes, upper thighs, hips, all of that to be uh, okay. Um, <laughs> then uh, all of that to core. So I consider the core to be kind of like all of this stuff right here. Um, the this is the this is all of the stuff that is going to keep number one your spine stable and that's kind of important because if you are uh, keeping your spine stable then force is traveling from the ground into your body and out to where you want it to go right if it's not then it's kind of getting stuck somewhere or it's leaking and when we say leaking, we don't mean something, you know, mystical, like, oh, there's like this weird invisible energy leak. What we mean is that the motion that has been, that is producing that force is interrupted somewhere in its chain. And when it is interrupted, it essentially loses its energy, right? So if I'm here and I'm doing this, but I'm going like that, then it's stopping at the hip because my hip's not moving correctly. So I can't do anything with my arm other than under my arm's power. Okay? When I actually try to punch, I'm punching with the hip and I'm turning, right? And although my, it looks like my, it looks sort of the same, the body mechanics are so different. It's the, ver you know, that versus that right to the untrained eye it can look it can look similar where breath comes in is these muscles connect our upper and lower body okay our lats can kind of come into that too now when i said to set your shoulders by bringing them together and st stuffing them into your back pockets that's kind of where we want it okay now as i always say the ear is shoulder poison, so we don't want we don't want a shrug coming up to the ear. Now we can, of course, move our shoulders past our ear, right? So when we're coming in here, we can duck down. What we don't want to do is we don't want to shrug up, and we don't want to punch at the same time as we're shrugging, right? If we want to use this here, we dip our head, okay? In like that. So it's not here because when we shove this up here, we're losing power in there, right? Here. So when we're so when we when we when we do that, our shoulders not out of joint, it's all in the same space. And then we can take energy from the ground and bring it forward. Okay. Now that of course is the issue. Um, power in Kung Fu is generated from the legs and moved through the body. Um, like uh, Bruce Lee described it as like a, a chain with a ball um, or just an iron chain instead of an iron bar um, because, because of its movement and because of its kind of whip-like um, ability. Oh, geez. Hold on one second. I'll try to arrest this in the bud. There we go. Okay, no more, <laughs> no more dinging. <laughs> All right. Okay, so anyway, so what we're trying to do is we wanna to try to connect this whole chain. And that's what we kind of call this in, um, in uh, human movement science circles is the kinetic chain, right? anything that you do, whatever sport you're doing, you're taking power from your legs and you're moving it into your upper body. And you're doing that through your core. That's its job, okay? Our, it, we've freed up our hands so that we can now do things, but now we're not as stable, we have to move and we have to produce power there. 
Okay, so how do we move, generate power from the ground and bring it up, okay? Well, the first thing, if we think about our mechanics, right, our lift, which is if we're standing like this with our feet together, we go down, our knees stay where they are, and our hips go back, okay? If we put one foot back and we do that, we get that kind of little bow. Like that, okay? Now, using that motion, we can generate a whole lot of power, okay? It's like a jump. We load the jump with our lift, we jump up high in the air when we don't have a ceiling to worry about. Then when we drop and we, we land, we go into a squat to decelerate ourselves, okay? That's the most natural expression of these particular mechanics. Um, how we're gonna use these is this way. You can produce a lot of power that you're issuing into an, into an external object um, in many different ways and in many different methods. But the basic idea for bringing power from the ground up is through our hip hinge, okay? Like I said, if I go like this, I go down into a lift, like I'm picking something up off the ground. If I put one foot back and do the lift on the back one, now I've got this. If I hold out my hands, now I've got a push, okay? If I accept something into my hands like this and then push, I wanna use my back leg, right? I tighten my core by sucking in a little bit of air Right, and then ha, pushing into the ground to push that object out of the way. Okay, that's the process pretty much all the time. And there's a bunch of little tricks that you can do to kind of speed it up because it happens very, very fast. The first is just that, right? Here, just basically static, uh, single motion kind of like that. So we go, we'll try this on the side. If we come in here like this, we're gonna go here. <sighs> See, I come up here, I'm gonna bring my hands up to my chest. <clears throat> I'm gonna sit down, right? Boom, so I'm gonna hinge here. At the same time, <clears throat> here with the chest, Tun. <clears throat> right? In, up, so here we've got this dropping down, right? That's my first way of getting of getting power, right? If I'm up against something, now this is this is very very useful. It's a very Taiji like power um, because it's very good for wrestling. If you're in contact with somebody. You don't need a lot of motion. You don't need a step. You don't need any shifting. You're just huh, down there. Now, how do you train that, right? If we're here like this, you go slow and easy first, right? Then, at the very end, you're going to try to kind of snap it into place from your gut going up through your back and here. In, th in this case, we're going for the outside of our arms. You can go to the inside as well, but we'll do that later, okay? So here, okay? Power is kind of focused in here, down at the heel of the palm, okay? Now, what you want to be careful of is that you're letting it get you. So you, you, you gotta get it to, to the ends of your extremities and you need to relax to do that, right? So if I'm coming up closer here, right? Here, okay? All of this is relaxed. Right at the end is where, I'm, is where I, I tense up. Now notice this position. Right? which is where we were standing before. So that's 
that's one of those things, okay? So that's our first way of doing it. You kind of do a wave through the body, okay? Now, when you do it on one side, right, you want to turn, okay? If I'm here, I can do it. It's not really great. For our, for our purposes here, when we're going here, we're going to go and we go off to the diagonal. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. That's the same. That's the same kind of thing. But the two-handed version is 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 where we go. So now you can also step and shift. So when I come through here and I step through, hmm, I've got momentum. I've got inertia. I can translate that into power into the, into the target. How do I do that? I have to meet the target and then I have to connect with it. And by connecting with it, I have to push into it a little bit. I have to become a little bit stiff. Okay. Not ah, totally, but just a little bit so that when I do something, it connects. If I'm too loose, it's just, I'm just going to rub, <laughs> rub my opponent. And, and I don't necessarily want to do that. What I want to do is at the very instant that I make contact is I go rigid and then I relax. Okay. That's a timing thing. That's what you're doing in practice when you do this type of thing and how it will come out. Now, this is called a lot of things. A lot of, I call it Duojin. That's the first thing I heard it as. And Duojin sometimes is translated as cold force but it means to shiver, okay? And the idea is that you're making a kind of small movement through the body, okay? Um, if, I, if I shake and I try, if, and this is, try this. It's, it's, it's harder than it looks. Just hold your fists out, right? Don't squeeze them yet. And try to move, move your whole, like vibrate your whole body as quickly as you can now squeeze your fists as you do it and notice that it becomes easier, right? Now, you can stop looking like a fool for a moment. But this is the thing. You will see this a lot of times in certain martial arts is they'll come out and go, right? They'll do a little sh a shake, right? What's that for? Sometimes <laughs> when I was first start starting out, I thought it was like many rapid fire punches in one. <laughs> it's not. It's just one punch. It trains the body so that, like, if I step forward and I make contact with that, with that target, I don't collapse. I stay firm, and the energy goes into the target. Okay? So there's, again, where that core comes in. When I step through, my core has to be able to accept something. Right? Okay. The Dantian, as is in Chinese martial art, pretty much corresponds to your anatomical center of gravity, right? Which is around your, your uh, lumbar vertebrae, okay? This is a very, very important part of your whole body. It's the pivot point. Everything is kind of dependent on that, right? So we come out here, boom, okay? Stepping through or shifting, right? Just going through, occupying the space that the target is occupied, okay? Now, uh, it's not exactly the last one, but the last one we'll talk about today um, because it's one of these things that is often um, talked about, argued. The stomp, stomping on the ground. What is that for, right? Um, this is, again, another power generation type of technique. If I use the exercise we were doing before, this one here, I can throw a stomp in there to aid this entire motion. I come up here, I come up onto my toes, poof, and I slam my heels into the ground as they come out. Okay. Slamming your heel into the ground will send a shock wave up through your leg. And if you know how to do it, you can control that shock wave and go into the body. Okay. This is something that's done in Baji. A lot, right? Oh, 
stomping on the ground, right? Same with Chen style Tai Chi, right? So you'll see stuff like that, okay? Boom. Now there's lots of ways that you can stomp. I'm just going over the general idea, right? So again, we want to be relaxed. But when we go here, that, again, we want to exhale, right? Try to shiver right at the end, make it, make it stiff for a second, right? And basically, we're just trying to snap into position, right? Hold it for a moment before relaxing. That's pretty much the best, best advice there. Here, okay? Now, you can see it in other aspects of martial art. Baji, the first one that we did, that one there, but also the, uh, the opening, um, right? You can't hear, <laughs> it's concrete floor, so you can't hear it very well. But when you're here, you, 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 you slam both of your heels on the ground at the same time as you assume this position, right? Which again, puts lots of force into that elbow. Now, there are tales of this killing people, okay? I believe it. Um, <laughs> this is the elbow. The elbow is a very, very dangerous thing. Hitting somebody in the jaw with this would be very, very dangerous. Um, but anyway, so, so there we go. You, you take these, even just these three strategies of power, of power generation, right? And then you start to use your movement to find these areas where you can do that. The rule of thumb that we use in Kung Fu is something called the Lu, which is the six unities. Wrist, ankle, knee, elbow, shoulder, hip. All of these being together, you can create force, right? If they're not, you can't, right? If my if, if I'm out of alignment here and I don't move right, right? I put in first and then, or if I don't put anything in the, this moves, but doesn't do a whole lot, right? So that's the whole, that's kind of the whole point. So make sure that your hips and shoulders are aligned when, you, when you're about to uh, produce power. You don't want to be twisted and you don't want to be bent, okay? So you don't want to be like this. So even when you're in tun, it's shoulder blades, right? Scapular retraction, like that, okay? Do not, do not bend the lower back, right? Because that will, you can seriously, you can, you can bend the upper thoracic a little bit when you're doing this, as long as that you're not winging out with your, with your shoulder blades. But when you produce the power, everything needs to be, needs to be in alignment, right? So when I'm here, I can do all of this, but when I put the power in there, I'm, I'm straight, everything is lined up. Okay, so, do we have any questions from the gallery? Well, you answered my question because when you were talking about the stomp, it just, it made me think about the Baji set. Yes, yeah. The stomp, stomping is, is, is pretty cool with the Baji. Right. Hi, Ben. Yes, hello, Ben. Hey guys, sorry I uh, left my mic on there. Oh, that's oh right. no, that's okay. <laughs> I was wondering where that was coming from. <laughs> no, I was, I, I was making dinner. I, I I did not mean to subject you guys to that. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Oh, uh, anyway. So, oh, how do I get this to stop? <laughs> stop dinging. <laughs> All right. Um, so Chad, well, theoretically, these same principles with a weapon in hand, it, does it apply there as well? Like if you're if you're thrusting a staff or a sword or 
a lightsaber. Yeah, to an extent. Um, let me go. The saber here. Okay. When you're using a when you're using a an implement, right? Um, it actually improves what you can do barehanded, like it improves power. So, so working with weapons is a power exercise for barehanded. Because you're using an, uh, an external object, you have to control it with your core and you have to do this kind of out of the periphery, yeah. right? That's why really large weapons um, like the Bagua Dao, which are just, uh, they're unwieldy as far as heavy goes. They're more like a weight training device than they are a weapon itself, right? And the same can sort of be said for a lot of weapons uh, routines that you find in Chinese Gong Fu is that they're more an exercise and, and uh, um, weight bearing and dynamic load bearing exercise um, than they are uh, straight up teaching how to fight with one of these things, right? Because if you, if you really wanna fight with one of these things, you know, you're going to start off real simple with chops and stuff. Now, um, yes, but the same rules apply, right? Like when I hit with, with my weapon, all of my joints need to be in a line, you know, need to be in proper alignment, okay? Now, this is not always easy to figure out, right? So let's take the wrist. The wrist is a really good one, okay? Because um, it, wrist hurts a lot a lot of times it seems very fragile because anything that's mobile is going to be less stable right and so you end up hitting your wrist a lot like if you're punching and you've got if you're not squeezing right and, and stuff like that and your, your wrist is either bending back or too far forward or something like that you're going to put stress in there um so and this is another reason why i'm telling I, I tell people to you see turn the turn the hand and the arm rather than bend the wrist like this, right? That way I can keep everything in proper alignment so that when I make contact, that force will go in through me and I will have more inertia. So it will go back into the target, in this case, along that edge, which hopefully will create a cut or, or whatever I'm trying to do. Um, now, the thing with weapons is they're labor-saving devices, so you have to do that to a lesser degree, right? Um, I just have to kind of basically get it with one of these. When you're dealing barehanded, um, the margin can be a little bit smaller for error, um, you know, in that sense. Yep. Yeah, this, all of, all of this stuff, all of the mechanics, because you're essentially, I mean, you, you're still using your body even though this is a weapon, yeah. right? And you have to wield this around. Um, yeah, so like a lot of people also say, like if you point this and you see this bend here, right? That this is bad, right? It's not necessarily bad. It can be bad, it depends on what you're doing, right? <laughs> but um, if you're going straight in like this, this is not too, too bad a, a a position and I'll show you why because on the other side here if we're here like this especially with this handle the pressure is coming in here like this and you notice how it's lined up with this bone right so while on the outside this looks curved it's actually aligning the handle with the supports in the back now that's why you have those little pebble like bones in your wrist right your carpals and all that kind of thing, metacarpals, right? Metacarpals, yeah. right? So because those, all of those things, they're very complicated joints so that you can get a lot of mobility out of this, right? Now, generally speaking, from here to about here is where you want it when you want, when you have force coming in straight, okay? Now, where this is going to come, where this is going to be injurious is in cutting, right? Like thrusting is going to be zero problem, I, I, I think, as far as, as far as wrist protection. But if you're cutting and you're going like that, 
you're hyperextending this tendon over your wrist and then your, your forearm has to stop it around that curve, which is not ideal. Mm -hmm. All right, so what I wanna do is I wanna squeeze my, my saber, in this case, like that, so that my wrist aligns back up. And that again, when I make contact to cut and this happens, right? I have enough support here in the hand that goes through my arm and into my core mm -hmm. and it pushes, you know, pushes it through that way. Right, okay. All right. Do we have anything on the... I don't see anything. All right. Well, um, okay. Uh, anything else? Not off the top of my head. <clears throat> ben is uh, chime in there. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, he's got to go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yes. Um, but anyway, yeah. These so are. When you were showing that, like this angle, so. That would be applied for a parry also, right? right? Well, right. Now, there's where you get into difficulty because where is the force coming in? If I'm thrusting, that's okay because the, the, the force is going to come in straight into my arm, mm -hmm. right? And, and right here. There's, there's, there's no kink in that line. Yeah. Okay? If I'm cutting like this, I need to stop here so that there's no kink because as soon as I go here... Yeah. Now I've had a kink, yep. right? That's where that energy leak thing comes in, All right? Boom, there, okay? That's gonna put way more stress on these muscles right here. Sometimes you'll get there. Tennis elbow comes yeah. a lot from that from doing this one, yeah. rolling the wrist back like this, right? So that's what we wanna really avoid is something like this. Hyperextension and hyperflexion you know, that way, okay? All right. You can use those movements, right? But again, we're not talking about the movement aspect of all of this, we're talking about the power aspect of it. Right. So when you're ready to, 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 throw, to throw that thing and to hit something or to cut something, that's what has to happen. Okay. When you do a cut through a target, you throw your hip through it, you make everything, make sure that your shoulder, your hip, your elbow, everything is aligned so that when you come through with that cut, you've got proper edge alignment. You come through enough force. Like if you cut, a, if you try to cut a bottle and it just flies away, well, you've obviously put enough force into it to cut through it because it goes flying away, mm -hmm. right? So something happened where the force didn't come in fast enough, it didn't come in all at the same time, didn't come in at the right time, or there was an edge alignment issue, that kind of thing, right? All of that comes from practicing the, that slow kind of uh, way of doing it. Okay. Is this uh, in any way related to Qigong practice? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, a lot of this stuff comes from Qigong. And actually that's what Qigong is good for. Right. If you're doing any type of martial art, um, do qigong, do breathing exercises. That's why yoga is good for, for for some people because it's like a qigong, right? I prefer qigong because you don't have to do all those weird spinal manipulations. Are, are you doing qigong when you do taiji on Tuesdays? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. You start out with some qigong, and um, taiji itself is sort of like qigong as well. You know, martially partially focused Jeez. right okay so yeah okay all right well i think that's all i have for today okay i'll see you yeah you should post post this up next week on uh terra prime and also on uh five dragon and i'll put it on my wall oh so yeah 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 see if we can get some more people to tune in oh sure yeah yeah you all know everybody's at home right <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Everybody's home. No, no. That's why I was like, man, Frank, he could probably tune in on the, the, uh, 
the Frank and Rob. Well, no, Rob was on one of the uh, lightsaber ones. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, no, no, Rob. Rob hasn't been or, on. Like, or not Rob. We'll, um, get him, maybe, we'll get him on. Yeah. Maybe it was John. Yeah. Yes, yeah, John probably. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. longing for the day we can get back in the studio. Oh yes. Well, it, it's coming. Yep. Yeah, it is. Yep. All right. All right, well, man. That is that is it for us here at uh, Terra Prime. We will uh, be seeing you later. Um, we've got uh, Saber class this weekend. Um, check out the event on Facebook. If you want to participate in the Zoom meeting, um, go ahead. There's tickets available um, for like four bucks or something like that. Um, and uh, other than that, you can you can tune in. We'll stream it just like this one. So uh, again, I thank everybody for who tuned in or who's tuning in later. Thanks for uh, Ben for dropping in. Thank you, Brent, for, for yep. coming in and uh, making it a class. Yep. All right. All right. And we shall see you later. Patience, right. practice, perseverance. Happy sabering. Take care. <laughs>